Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today I present to you the Nano Boiler. We took our flagship product, the Eye Boiler, got rid of all the unnecessary bells and whistles, making it a third smaller. It still processes two kilograms per second of crude oil and can run 15 natural gas generators. How are your base with the Tuxi Industries Nano Boiler today? So, here's a side by side of the Nano Boiler with the eye boiler and you can see here that we have really cut this down to size and I'm rather proud of it but we did sacrifice on some features on this side we're giving up we're gi giving out nice chill um we're giving out nice chill methane so it won't won't be a, won't be an issue in your natural gas wherever you decide to cool your natural gas up here we're just sending it in space but uh and also this this has a built-in counter flow to heat the oil so we get to save a little bit there and also we're just dumping in this one we dump the sulfur in here so 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 this has actually less features but really it doesn't matter both of these systems can still power 15 natural gas generators and we can make it even smaller all right, so here it is in all of its glory. Um, we feed in, I'm feeding in 85 degree crude. If you have crude that's older than 85 degrees, you can either tepidize it up to 85 degrees or you can counterflow it against the input, but we're feeding in 85 degree here. And uh, as you can see, it comes in and it counterflows against the hot gases in here, picking up just a little bit of heat. And then we drop it into a bead pump. And you can see here, we've got the, the gas is flowing up and the liquid flowing down and it all, the major conversion of 200 to 555 degrees happens in here. This is the action zone. Then we have the gas, it flows up here, it drops off a bit of the heat for the steam turbine and it drops all the way down to here where it condenses into methane liquid. Behind here, uh, we've upgraded the temperature shift plate Behind here to aluminum. Um, if you don't have aluminum, I recommend thermium. Use the best thing you have for this temperature shift plate. There's another one down here. Um, this one is just diamond. So um, you can cheap out on that one. And then what we do is we have this pump pick up the methane and we have these two valves. These two valves drop it down to one kilo per second so it won't break the pipes. And you can see that this methane is leaving at 180 degrees, sometimes 200 degrees. Um, because of this design, we made it so small that uh, we we gave up on on really controlling the outputs on this. Um, output outputting hot methane is not really a big problem. You can just you know cool it down or just burn it in your natural gas generators. It's not really a huge issue. So for the nano boiler we decided to just not care about the outputs we're even outputting one negative 160 degree um sulfur if you want to use that in spaced out for your crops or something like that obviously run it through a water tank or something so that you can get it to a reasonable temperature or you could you could use the eye boilers technique of running it through here as well or you could even counterflow it against against the uh the hot methane but again we did not give you any unnecessary options. Like we're, we're even using uh, over two tons of, uh, of super coolant in this build just to get it down to this size. And which is really cool. As I've done earlier with the I boiler and with the E boiler, there are multiple options with this build. Um, this is, these ones are exactly, they're just not running. They're exactly the same as the one up there with super coolant on the bottom. You got a left version and a right version. And I also have a coolant saver option down here. It gets one tile bigger, but we can not use super coolant down here by putting in doors to instead control the temperature. So this is the less or the coolant saver blueprint option uh, linked below. And these are just the standard ones. Um, let's get into a startup for this though, because it is still a very, very easy startup. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure, 
um, that this is at 550 degrees and you can see we've already got that primed and we've got this down here at 180. So the system is already primed and this is a vacuum. Make sure that you have a vacuum in here. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. And uh, we've deleted a lot of space in here like in the in the eye boiler, these were diamond tiles. We're only using crude oil to hold in this, this water and steam. That's where a lot, this was able to be made so much smaller. Um, also an added feature that we've added in, just as a quick note, is this filter gate. If uh, this, if this particular sensor right here ever detects over a hundred kilograms of crude, then you're overworking the uh, the aqua tuner. But this this fail safe filter gate will give it a minute to catch up, which really helps if you're cycling in that time. This is not a necessary component, but uh, a little bit of a feature rich thing that we were happy to add to the nano boiler. It really helped us during testing that you'll probably never need because this shouldn't over overdo it. Now on startup, now that we've got it all primed, I like to start with stage one. This is we put in 500 grams per second. And why aren't you working? I'm sure everything's connected here. All right, so now that we got that fixed, we're dumping in 500 kilos or 500 grams per second of crude oil to get this primed. And we're just going to leave this on until these particular, like we have to have these three tiles where the uh, the methane liquid will be touching, they have to get down to about minus 160 degrees. This one's already there because it's touching the temperature shift plate, so we don't have to worry about that one. But until this tile is 160, negative 160, and this tile is negative 160, that's when you're going to see flashing happening here. So, and you can see it's th at this part of the stage, because this, this kind of takes a little bit of time. I've turned it up to 10 X speed, which is above vanilla. And so this is when you kind of bugger off, go do some other project and let it do its own thing. You can see a lot of gas, a lot of gas is getting around in here and, and the vent will just eat it. So we don't really need to filter it out. But this is why we tuned it down to 500 grams per second instead of 700 in our eye boiler because we're just deleting this methane. So you know, we tuned it down to 500 for this stage just to save a little bit of methane. Um, so we're going to fill until this gets to 50 degrees. Believe me, it just, it's just better to wait until it gets to 50. Hiccups and weirdness can happen. And uh, so we recommend you leave this at 50, but you can see that um, this ceramic tile is at one negative 159, like this one, negative 159, they're primed. And now this is just filling. And we're climbing up to 50 degrees and we can already see that the gas is stabilized out. For some reason, the nano boiler runs more stably than the eye boiler, which is really neat. So now that we're at 50 kilos here, I'm going to turn this up to fast fill, which is 1400 grams per second. This seems like an arbitrary number, but it just, in our testing, this is the number that works, works best. Like you go higher than, then you start getting a little bit of temperature problems in here. So we recommend 1400 for this stage until this pump runs at 500 kilos, because the sensor is set to above 500 kilos. Uh, this is actually the default setting, but the default is below, we just switched it over to above. And yeah, down here we keep this at 183. We actually have a sensor hidden in here that'll run the aqua tuner if this slab is is uh, not negative 175, which can actually overheat this chamber, which is not a big issue as long as you've got oil coming in. The, the beauty of this is it just runs. At this point, almost no natural gas, like part of the reason why we use an aluminum plate here is, is stabilize the bottom. It works so much better if you can make that temperature shift plate better. And part of the reason why this is so efficient is we hook away some of the temperature shift plates in the eye boiler. Believe it or not, they some of them caused inefficiencies in the system. Like there was one that we had put behind the aqua tuner there and we had put in 
a uh, conveyor bridge as well. These are just temperature shift plates as well, but they, they just affect these three tiles. That's why I went with those instead of temperature shift plates, and I can't put a temperature shift plate on this tile. So that's what the conveyor rails are for. Make these out of steel. That's the best thing you can do. And in the eye boiler, let me just show you up here. We've got an extra one up here, and we've got an extra one there. Just by deleting this conveyor bridge and this temperature shift plate, you can get this to be a couple more... This is, runs at 71%, as 72, but you can get it down to 69, 70 just by removing those things. But this thing is meant to process two kilos per second, and the eye boiler, you could actually overclock it higher. When we built the eye boiler, we knew there was room, but we also knew it was a great product. This product is amazing. I love the nano boiler. I, how can we make it much smaller and still have everything in there? I don't know. You're welcome to try them. All right, as you can see now, we the pump is cycling and we have 500 kilos down here. So now we turn this up to 2000 or whatever setting you want to set it to. This, this aqua tuner likes to run about 80% of the time, which is 10% more often than the... Uh, the eye boiler but for that trade-off we've made it so that this is so much smaller we don't have to close in the steam turbine your dupes can walk over the top this is 20 degrees you could easily grow some crops here and get use the cooling on the top to grow crops near it you can also this system all of my eye boiler all of the boilers that made by tuxi industries um the the aqua tuner produces excess cooling compared to the heat produced by this. So you can actually steal cooling off the bottom of this if you wanted to use it for, uh, let's say, let's say you wanted to cool food, for example. You could easily put in an extra temperature shift plate and a door so that you can control it down to a reasonable temperature if you wanted to have a gas in there. Or you could flow your, your food through there and flash freeze it and store it in a vacuum. And, you know, so there's possibilities there for food and whatnot make this work. So there you have it. Dead simple startup sim. Like, how many steps was that? Maybe four steps to start this puppy up. And then you can just forget about it. If, uh, if you ever have any interruptions in flow, this thing will just vacuum out and just wait ready for more. So you can put this thing in hot standby and it'll just work and it'll wait idle if you need it and because we're exporting out the uh, methane as a liquid it set that up as an infinite storage on the other end if you're so inclined and just run batches through this or you can set this up to run 15 natural gas generators almost all the time 14 all the time and another one that'll run about 80 percent of the time or more if you take the gas from the oil well So, where does this leave us with the eye boiler? The nano boiler is a very, very cool product. But what if we take what we learned from the nano boiler and apply it to the eye boiler? Well, we did. That product's coming. We're excited. Because a goal that I realized when I was making the eye boiler that I just couldn't quite reach because this runs 72% of the time. Well, we managed to make the eye boiler better. Stay tuned for the 2022 model. Thanks again for your patronage to Tuxi Industries and please be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our products. Here are the schematics. The save is linked below. We hope you get many faithful cycles from your nano boiler. Thanks for watching and I hope you are informed, entertained, or both. Catch you next time.